hello. Welcome to another episode. I think this is number eight of the Funky Marketing Podcast. Uh, my name is Neman Jazjukovic, CEO of Funky Marketing, and I'm your host. So Funky Marketing Podcast is a place where I get to talk to the um, people from um, marketing, sales, uh, design, all different backgrounds, people who are entrepreneurs, but also people who are just good people doing good job for the good people. So today I have the pleasure to meet uh, a great guy. We don't know each other uh, live. We only met online. So basically this will be the introduction and you will get to be a part of it. So uh, Mario, please uh, give us a little bit of your background and tell us who you really are. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Mario. My last name, a bit harder to pronounce. So we'll leave it out at this moment. Uh, yeah, well, since today we're going to talk about sales, I, I have about 20 years in, in sales, doing all sorts of sales, um, from door to door, um, from the telemarketing sales, uh, party, party sales, and then about last, let's say, 10 years in, in IT and B2B B2B selling, right? So that, that's kind of the um, too long, didn't read version of me. I, I read a lot. I'm a, like a big proponent of reading and, and self-improvement. Um, I'm, I'm also what is known as seminar whore. And you can edit this maybe later. So I, I go to every seminar, every webinar. I kind of just digest uh, everything that comes my way. <laughs> yeah, um, currently working with a uh, very cool startup called Consorto um, and uh, launching my own agency called Growthnetics that does lead generation uh, services, basically generating SQLs on demand hmm. using our outbound nice. sales mm -hmm. methodology. Mm -hmm. I think that this is something that a lot of people are looking to find a good ones, yeah. but they're not a good, that many. Well, good ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah. I don't know who I've been talking to. Like, um, I think Milorad told me that he's also creating like uh, outbound sales team also. So yeah. it's nice that the people that know what they are doing are, are actually doing that. Well, yeah, I mean, just, just go, go on LinkedIn if you, if you follow people. Um, what I've noticed is that kind of my philosophy, so how I view sales and how sales should be done is very much aligned with top performance. So I said, well, okay, I, I tried a bunch of stuff during in 2020. Nothing worked. So guess I'll open up my own. It's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of it's this type of a year, I would say. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> Another one who is starting business in 2020. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't, I don't care if it's if it's COVID or Ebola or whatever it is. Just rock and roll. Yeah, cool. So I have a question, uh, and it's always interesting to me. Like, we all get to hear like Gary V's of the world and other people like they were selling as a, as kids, and this is what got them into like entrepreneurship and sales. So. Did you do the same or no? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So I was sixth or seventh grade. So that's 12, 13 years of age. And look, li living in, in Serbia, former Yugoslavia with UN sanctions and when you have nothing ever, you kind of have to, you know, get some money. So I began selling makeup in 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 some but it, 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 it's they, they still run so it's a kind of an mlm right but it i didn't care about getting people in i just wanted to sell it get my commission so i can pay for my school trips like a, end of the uh you know what i mean like end of the eighth grade uh big trip and then at the end of my high school trip so i worked my ass off being the top, top salesman in that kind of small cluster because like it, and i remember this vividly like you couldn't get any stuff in serbia our team leader had to go to hungary buy shit there and then <laughs> bring it back so i can distribute it 
all over the place. So yeah, I, it, it began uh, selling cosmetics to my mom and my mom's friends and her coworkers. <laughs> nice. And, and I think we're, we're still kind of in the same loop because like um, when I was looking to buy a microphone, the, the best, this is the second best I get, the, the, the best one we couldn't buy it in Serbia. So we still had to go to the Hungary. Still, still having those uh, flashbacks from, from 90s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. so um, business world and marketing and sales, all of it has definitely gone through some changes. Uh, oh, yeah. B2B, B2B as well. Uh, and it's going in a positive direction, I can see it, but for, for my taste, it's going very slowly. Some things that I guess that uh, would happen, didn't happen, like all those things, you know, like people going after SQLs, not going after MQLs, those kind of things. Uh, but, and it didn't get only harder. In, in a way, it got even more complicated and complex because the, the products and the services are getting more complex. And uh, mm. that's why like building it is become um, harder and especially like selling them. So yeah. what's your like overview of, of that? Well, look, my, my, over, my overview, like my, my, my attitude, my opinion towards it was always the same. It's never easy. Like it's, it's always very hard. The, the only question is, can we make it more or less complicated or more or less complex, right? So I think uh, on one part, you're right. It, it, it has gotten a bit more complex, but I would say it didn't get any harder because it's very hard as is, right? Like if, if everyone did sales and everyone was good at it, we would have a lot more millionaires on our hands, but we don't, you know? So for me, it's, it's always been keep reading a lot and keep keeping my mind sharp and, and just following people who do, do sales day to day, right? Because the, the, those are the people who are in the trenches. And if, if you're relying on, or you're not reading or not kind of bettering yourself, you would just, especially like COVID has definitely did like accelerated us as humans in the ways of technology, but also change how we sell. And those who don't adapt will probably die out. Like it's, it's, it's that simple. Mm. Can you tell me a few, few people that you're following? Maybe we can recommend people who to, who to follow, yeah, who do you see as, yeah. as a well, reliable my, source? Yeah, well, w- one of my, like, I'm the, one of the biggest evangelists of Josh Brown. Uh, he's very active on LinkedIn, very common sense. He, he's, I think, former VP of sales of Basecamp. Now he has his own sales and training agency. So I, I highly recommend you follow him. And then also just, um, I, 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 could, have, I, I could look at LinkedIn, but uh, just like people who are doing day-to-day sales and kind of talk about it, right? If, 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 if I were to recommend anyone, probably, yeah, Josh Brown, maybe Keenan. He's the author of Gap Selling. He's awesome. His videos also are very insightful. So maybe if, if you're just starting in sales or you don't know who to follow, I would, I would, I would kind of recommend these two guys. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I think I'm following, following both of them. So yeah. Yeah. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we, uh, I, I said that I think it's uh, maybe getting harder uh, to sell, but I think as somebody who is coming from the, from the B2C background to the B2B, I'm seeing that some things are getting easier in um, most of all, we know to whom we're selling. We don't know just the name of the company. We actually know the people on positions. We know the seniority. We know all those kind of things. Now, if we're gonna get there or no, that's that's another thing. Uh, and yeah. uh, it's it's interesting that when I'm talking with with companies and we, when we come up like who's your target target group, they're 
talking about them still as companies, not mm -hmm. as like, I need to go to that person, to this company, he is in charge of the deal that I need to make. And yeah. it's still like, you don't target the object. You target no. the people inside the company, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, it would, and I and I do I do a lot of trainings with uh, with startups. Shout out to any startup wise guys alumni and people from startup startup wise guys listening to this. I'm I'm a sales mentor for the last past three years, uh, and w w whenever I talk about this specific subject, there is always a very good lit litmus test, right? So, since you're in sales, you're kind of out there to solve a problem, right? So if, if there is no problem, there is no motivation for change. O other than that, the problem actually needs to be hurting in order for, 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 the, for the change to be there. But one of the best things, one of the best questions you can ask, you can ask if you want to find that person is, if this problem is not solved, who gets fired in that specific company? Yeah, it's, it's a very simple question, but like just kind of, kind of makes you think, right? Who gets fired? If no one gets fired, maybe your product is not solving a, a big problem. So you should maybe think twice about that. Yeah, this is, this is great. This is great. I love it. I mean, yeah. in, in marketing, we're usually, usually saying you need someone who is frustrated enough to, to, to think about it right now, but this one is also, is also one of the best answers that, that uh, <laughs> I heard. Yeah. So yeah, uh, in, in Serbian, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Cool, so, uh, so tell me if you, if I know that you are a lover of the processes as I am, so um, how do you set up the process Let's use an example. I don't know. Let's uh, hmm. Hmm. let's first go to this. What's the process of uh, SMB company, and what's the process for the enterprise? Are they different? How they are different? How the sales overall is different? Mm. You mean how do, how would I approach? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, it's it, it comes to the the beginning of of our talk today. It's about complexity, right? So you still need to cover your bases. I mean, in SMBs, there, there, there is like a smaller amount of people you need to cover, quote unquote, right? To, to sell to, like there are less influencers that will inevitably influence whether or not you get to sell or whether or not you will eat tomorrow, right? Because you're in sales. Right? If you don't sell, you don't eat. In, in a, a, enterprise is not so much different your your main objective when selling to enterprises you have to map out everyone like there are four types of influencers and uh well let's call it people who will influence whether or not you will sell in, in an enterprise and then your job is to find all of these people cover all of them whatever that means and then go from there it's it's just more time and um, well, I wouldn't say more time, but it's just a bit more complex, right? The, the time or like <laughs> everyone just talks, oh, how long is your sales cycle? And can we shorten the sales cycle? Like, why would you ask that? Like if you're selling a $50 widget for an enterprise and you have hundred people, that's $5,000 or euros per month. That's not a lot of money and probably some mid-level manager has the authority to authorize that. But if you're selling an enterprise level solution that costs $10 million per year, like everyone in the company will be involved in that deal. It probably be a year, maybe year and a half while you sell it. Right? So yeah. mm, I think, I think one, one other thing that, that's like maybe the difference is the when it comes to time is the uncertainty because yeah. like in enterprise sales you can you can sell try to sell for a year to an enterprise and 
you don't know if the deal is going to be closed in a year or no, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, a, it's just a, di it's a different beast in, in regards to time. There is, but it's still the same amount of work. Like if you're selling to 20 small companies, you have 20 decision makers. If you're selling to a, an enterprise, you still, one enterprise, you still have 20 decision makers. <laughs> it's a great analogy. I mean, pe 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 people who influence sale, I wouldn't call them decision makers, but people who influence the sale. Yeah. Using the Herman Miller, if you ever read New Strategic Selling by Herman Miller, that's, that's their terminology that I, I really, really love when, when it comes to selling to enterprise. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, let's get a little bit into into the yeah, one of the favorite topics uh, these days. I think this year in a, in a, in marketing and LinkedIn environment, sure. and it is okay. like the connection connection between marketing and sales. So my opinion about it is that uh, salespeople usually know how to do marketing. Marketing people have no idea how to do how to do sales because they didn't talk to the customers that's mm. one of the first things and they don't have any desire to do that in most cases but when you look at it um, from another perspective like 80 percent of the agency do lead generation and when you do lead generation usually going after mqls but it doesn't matter uh, and so they they practically do sales they don't do marketing because they are allowing to call, which is get more, get more leads, right? So uh, I want to get just, just an introduction. I want to get into the, how do you see the relationship between marketing and sales? How, how sales is developing uh, also having marketing in mind? Mm. That, that's kind of an age old question. What is the relationship between sales and marketing? In the ideal world, these two entities should work together closely because like one messaging, it, it's always wrong that you have one messaging coming from marketing and then sales talks about something else. And so the kind of this di disconnect between, between the two entities, for me, it's sales has evolved a bit. And I think, the, the, the new role of kind of chief revenue officer that's kind of popped up in, in maybe last three or four years sums it all because that, that's kind of the person that, that holds the reins of both marketing and sales and kind of keeps everyone aligned, which is in the end, everyone is, should be working towards the same goal. Although what I've seen most of the time, they are not. Like a lot of infighting, a lot of interdepartmental squabble, especially if you have a, a, a like a maybe larger teams. And like, dude, like we, we are all going like in that direction. Like why is it like, but everyone is pulling like, like this, right? So I, I, I don't know. I've, I've worked with some excellent marketeers and I always try to position myself as, okay, well, let's talk. This is the feedback from the field. This is what, this is what we are getting. This is, the, this is what customers tell us. I try to involve client success as well. And they just like try to work together towards the same, same goal, right? Like you don't have to serve sales and sales doesn't have to serve marketing, but kind of working working together, which I know it's utopia and it doesn't work that way, but that's kind of my, 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 my opinion about it, my, my stance. Yeah, so, so I see it kind of, kind of the same. What we are trying to do here is like, we create the demand, we create the marketing engine, it's the, it gets people inside, people who are SQLs, we don't get them to sales until they say, they click on the button, I want to talk to the sales or I want to see the demo or whatever it is, the yeah. CTA. Then when you do it like that, you can have just two experienced people in sale to close the deals because those people actually want to buy the product or the service. Yeah, I, in, I in most cases. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say wanna buy. I say the the ultimate goal of b- both marketing mm-hmm. and let's say uh, outbound reach or outbound research is to generate interest. To say, okay, well, the stuff that you're telling kind of kind of resonates with me, and I would like to learn more. I would kind of like to. To, to see what the hell is happening there, right? And then the goal of the, it, it's called an account executive, well, the goal of the sales in that specific situation is to diagnose the problem further, do a demo, and then hopefully cl- close the sale, right? Yeah, and uh, I mean, what I was trying to say is that uh, if you do it, like that and you get people who have the certain level of of interest and uh familiarity with the product basically you the sales don't need to do exactly as marketing is doing marketing can be focused on inbound and getting those sqls and sales then have time to do something different as you said like maybe go outbound and do other channels to generate more uh more revenue Yeah. yeah exactly that exactly that and yeah, I mean, it's, it's always hard to, to keep everything under one, under one umbrella as they, as they oh, it. well, it, it, yeah, just, just getting everyone aligned, right? Because it, we should be working towards the same goal, but then at the end, everyone has its own agendas. Everyone has its own personal goals. And then it, for me, it's it like kind of like why do you like the blame that comes with sales blame? Ah, oh, you didn't bring me enough leads, or when marketing says, "Oh, we brought you leads and you are too incompetent to close them," and then it's it's like it's not getting us anywhere, right? Like, how can we be how can we be better at the end of the day? That's actually my favorite favorite motivational poster. Be, be better <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that like yeah. uh, uh, it, it reminds me of what i was doing um uh, like back in i don't know 2018 um mm-hmm. i was the gm of the agency and i was uh in charge of the biggest clients so i didn't have anyone to overview what i'm doing except the owners but that's another story so um i had to come up with my own goals and I set up a goal just get at least three uh, relevant people on the website every day that's it just increase it by three and I learned tons of things just by doing that because okay I did that I got this 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 it worked for five days now I got to do something different it stopped working so I come to something else and yeah. it's just like something that keeps you going but I mean this is an example of somebody who who is who is crazy and who knows what what he wants to do and achieve. Yeah, and uh, it's not for everybody. I mean, no, <laughs> I agree. And one of the one of the things, especially when we, we talked a little bit about the the influence of the pandemic and COVID and how how everything has changed for me, and it it took me a really long time to kind of embrace this philosophy, but when I took an, an NLP course, like way, like more than 10 years ago, it was one, one of these sentences kind of always stuck with me. And only maybe four or five years ago, I, I really started to, to kind of live it. And that the, the sentence goes like this, like the most flexible, it, and it goes, it, this is a sentence taken from uh, cybernetics. So it says the most flexible part of the system has a tendency to control the to control the system, meaning try to be flexible. And I would say both for sales and marketeers who don't adapt, who are not flexible, just it's gonna lose out. Like if, if you are stuck in one, one mindset, one, one way of thinking, not expanding your uh, comfort zone, it, I can see a very short career. <laughs> perfectly, perfectly said. Uh, and yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing changes. And uh, I mean, 
sales, marketing. I'm seeing people building personal brands on LinkedIn, people positioning themselves, sharing, sharing knowledge. I mean, if you work in sales, you have a lot of one-on-ones of potential clients or conversations. And it's so easy to share at least one thing a day, specific thing inside. You don't even have to mention a name or, or whatever. But um, just by doing that, you create that trust ahead before you even jump on a call with someone. They, they know you. They know who you are, what you present, yeah. what you yeah. sell. So it's, it's kind, of, kind of an interesting uh, approach when you have to go into creating relationships right yeah it is i mean it's but again it, it this takes discipline this takes a, a bit of planning and people are just simply not willing to do that like i know a lot of people well, not that it doesn't matter if you're sales and marketing or whatever like i know a lot of people who just look i just want to work nine to five or eight, eight, eight to four and I like when I leave the office, I don't want even to think about anything, right? Which is fine, right? But those are not the entrepreneurs of the world. Those are not the, the people who actually make things happen. So I've learned very early in my career that, that whatever I do, it kind of needs to like kind of hover all the time here to just like a li- little bit of thinking about about all of that right about how business works how how can i <laughs> be better uh, than, than i was the, the day before how can i sell just just one euro more day in day out right it's interesting i, I went through that early in my career early in my management career let's say yeah. uh, when I try to do with everybody what I did for myself, how I got to the GM position. So I want them to, to read more, to get educated more, to do more based on that. And then I got the feedback and I realized some people want just to work eight hours a day, go home and don't care about anything. And that's okay. But then you think about are those people really the people that you want in your company based on your goals? And that's, then you go into different conversation, but it has nothing to do against those people. No, it's, 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 uh, I'm just saying that that's the way of the world, right? So, and that's why not every single person on a planet is an entrepreneur and has its own successful, whatever success means, uh, company and pri- private business, right? So... Uh, it, it, I've I've talked I've talked more on this this topic uh, in the past. I, I just say okay, it's the way of the world, and that's it. Like some people are this way, some people are that way, and it's fine. Yeah, you can you can just do just so much about it. That's yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, so. What do you think will happen in the next few months? What are some things that we, are, that we have adopted this year or maybe like recently? What are some things that we're gonna, gonna implement more? What are some things that we're gonna do less? Mm. Well, that, I definitely see people are, especially people who were reluctant to use tech uh, are now far more open to it and kind of as, as maybe as a planet, we are a lot more open to using and embracing technology in, well, not just in business, but like in our every, everyday lives. Uh, this, this pandemic has been a really, really powerful stress test to see what can survive it and what, what cannot and what should be, like, especially uh, especially when you, when, because um, I'm working in the commercial real estate, uh, with a commercial real estate startup, I see what is happening regarding transactions, right? Like retail, hospitality, just, just slowly dying, slowly dying out, right? If, if e-commerce was big before the pandemic, <laughs> look, look at it now. 
but it, it that that's that's the evolution what i i i i don't have kind of a crystal ball i can, i can really only speculate right i i hope we come back to something resembling uh pre-pandemic times I, I don't think we will get back fully to what was before i say we will go back to some mixture mix uh what will when we speak about let's say sales or 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 marketing uh but i'm I, i'm an optimist i i have a lot of faith in modern medicine i have faith that we will get through this and may, maybe be better as as human beings at, at the end of the day i i do have a lot of optimism towards towards the future so that, that that that's good that you trust us as uh, as human beings. Like uh, I saw the article. What else? Well, what else? What else? What else we can do? Like if if, if I, I think I have do. less less optimism uh, now <laughs> when I saw the article this morning in the look Serbian portal that says uh, like COVID is not only doing damage to your health; it's also doing damage. To your brain so you want to infect other people that's how it infects us are we in the zombie land or what is happening so jesus yeah who knows uh but yeah it's definitely some things are going to be different and i think a lot more companies understood now what they can do with with digital oh yeah a wake uh, up call definitely yeah uh wake up uh, even seeing like the so the musicians doing uh, online courses, teaching people how to sing, how to play, how to produce music, whatever it is. And it's kind of interesting. Like you used to have everything on hand a few months ago. Now you have everything on hand, <laughs> ready, or just ready for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it's, it's been very, it's been trying times, I would say, for everyone, especially the, the, the kind of pandemic fatigue mentally. I, I like, in the middle of, of it all, may, maybe two or three, three, three or four months ago, I've, I've deleted all my social media uh, accounts, except for LinkedIn, right? I keep it for business. But I deleted it Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, like everything, like we were bombarded with so much i i would say despair and negativity and then of course the algorithms just amplify all of that so you get more despair and more negativity because you you react to it and we live in the att att attention economy so they just keep trying to monetize all of it and it's it it just been very healthy for me to to turn all that noise and just I just go once in two weeks, see what is happening and say, okay, and just go on with my, my life, blissfully ignorant. <laughs> that, that's cool. I, I, I've been thinking about it, especially when it comes to Facebook, but I, I, I use it just to get out my frustration or whatever it is on my mind. I use it like Twitter and on Twitter, I'm talking about basketball. So we had MBA, luckily, so it was something to talk about and something to watch. Like, and, and my wife is, is especially happy that new season is starting uh, on 22nd of December, so I won't sleep early again. Yeah, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, the, of the NFL, so shout out to my NFL buddies. And we were like, is there gonna be a season? Is there not gonna be a season? what's happening but like it's guys like the season must like that the nfl is the driving force of the u.s economy like like everything revolves around nfl so we would say yeah it's definitely gonna be a season just kind of vent out <laughs> um i have a question about something that we already talk about uh here on this podcast but um since you're working a lot with startups i'm working recently uh, also a lot i think also with with the wise guys uh but in agrotech mm. here with the biosense institute uh and like 
what do you recommend to startups when they just start how to get the first the first customers that's kind of uh, something that I want my um, understanding is that uh, they I mean when you start you go outbound okay to, to get a uh, 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 first traction but also you need first to build like uh, if you're going serious, first you need to build like marketing engine. It, it can be just one person, and then you you go with sales. You don't build a team with sales. Sales is here just to amplify everything and take it mm. to the next level. So I want to just get your opinion about it. Yeah, well, I I I advocate the exact opposite uh, because especially when you're pre pre revenue or early revenue startup, which is the startups that I usually work with. Uh, you need for, first of all, and we are talking in B2B field, right? So we are not talking about B2B. So in B2B field, first of all, you need to leverage your network. So it's called FNF friends and family. So people who you know, people you work with, people that do trust you, and that's your first several sales. Like you do it. You as a founder have to do those those sales, right? And then uh, you do whatever founders do plus sales until you die. And then when you're dead, when they have your funeral, then you hire someone to do, do more. So as for whether or not having marketing versus sales, um, I, I would say that that depends a lot about what kind of product you have. And, 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 and to, to be more precise, what kind of problem are you solving and where are your customers, right? So if you can reach them by doing marketing and like draw them in inbound, yeah, man, like do marketing. If not, if, if they are on the phone or WhatsApp or whatever, so then dude, pick up the damn phone and make the calls. Like it's that easy. I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy, but it, it's an easy choice. What kind of a decision you need to make, right? This is where they are. So I can reach them in using this, this channel or two channels because you don't have any money. You have to do it by yourself, right? So. Yeah, love it, love it. I mean, the, here where I'm in a, in a co-working, there was a guy like a few months ago coming, say he's doing sales. He's mm -hmm. basically finding people who are um, truck drivers, and he sells that people to the truck driving companies. And uh, he doesn't have a website, doesn't have anything. He has LinkedIn, but he basically just has his phone and he has yeah. relationships and that's it. I just need this space for two days to talk with people and to close some deals. And this is all oh, I yeah. do. That's it. Your phone and, and maybe your email. Like that, 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 that's kind of enough. <laughs> yeah and uh yeah it's 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 different depending on the on the startup uh and i mean we are a lot of time we are talking about those things like they are all kind of in the same bubble but there is so much diversity oh, yeah. all around the startups even if in just SaaS or just finance yeah. or wherever yeah, and it's like, look, that, that, this, is, this is one of the things that I teach startups. It's what is your client's or potential client's relationship with the problem? Like, how, how, do, your, how do your potential clients see the problem that you're solving? Do, do they know that they have a problem or, or not? Or they know that they have a problem and it, but it's not hurting them that, or they don't see that it hurts, or they have a problem and it hurts a lot, or they don't see that they have a problem. So what is the, like, you need to know what is the relationship, and that will determine how you will try to get them uh, to, to use your, your solution. We seem to have lost <laughs> Mario. 
Good to Okay, let's wait for a few minutes. Maybe he'll he'll join us again. Something wrong with with the internet or something like that. Anyway, uh, we we had had a good conversation around sales about B2B sales. We talked a lot about what are the what's going to happen after COVID. What's been happening? uh pre-covid and um it generally it's been a great conversation i will just talk for a few more minutes to see if uh, mario can, can reconnect so we can have like um share some thoughts for, for the end because uh, uh in the next i think one or two uh Episodes. I, I want to go more into into sales and talk about that side of the things because we are just here for the for the marketing. Here is Mario joining us uh, again. Great, so we can have the chance to end the conversation. I am here back. Yeah. My my, <laughs> my computer just literally turned turned itself down. Like it just shut down for some reason. Technology is failing us. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. And uh, I mean, think we are coming close to the to the end of the of the today's episode. So one thing I'm asking all the people is, uh, Mario, do you have like anything to say for the end? Something that you thought it was good to to talk about, or something that we forget to mention, or some recommendation or advice you want to give to the people, whatever. Read books, people. <laughs> uh, I, I, the, the, the best thing I, I can say, just kind of hang in there. Try to do your best. Um, and tr try to somehow uh, adapt to everything that is, that is happening around you, right? This is, this, is, this is no ordinary times that we are living in. Uh, regardless of, of what the numbers say, I think we as, well, with the exception of a few countries are handling this pandemic pretty well. We, we don't have 80 million dead. That was just 100 years ago when the Spanish flu was uh, hot. <laughs> but it's it like we, we are trying, we are adapting. It's, it's just a as I said, I'm a, I'm a big optimist of what, what, what comes and what will, uh, what the future will bring us. So hang in there. And if you need anyone to do sales, you know, shameless self-promotion. <laughs> yeah, you know where to find him on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn, he just told you. <laughs> yeah, yep, on LinkedIn. Yep, you, you can find me there. Yeah, there is one thing I would add uh, besides the books is listen to music and dance from time to time. I like to each, each step that I'm seeing as a step up, I like to dance it out just to play some music. I was just a uh, guest on Megan Bowen's podcast and um, she asked me kind of the same thing to recommend something. So I said, read comics besides books and also like play some music because it was like 7 p.m. when we were recording the podcast and I started to work from 8 a.m. So I told her um, if I didn't have a chance to play like, I don't know, what was it? Uh, Bruce Springsteen, my hometown, loudly in the office before the call, I would, I would be asleep uh, for <laughs> yeah. this podcast and we wouldn't do it. So. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. Yeah, that's that's pretty good advice. Yeah, music. Um, okay, cool. Um, well, guys, this was uh, this was it for this for this episode. Uh, I definitely think we we talk about a lot of a lot of topics. Actually, we started a lot of topics, so I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation in the in the next next month. Mario can join us again, and uh, be happy to. Yeah, thank you for thank you for listening and uh see you see you next Wednesday. Bye everyone.